Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The study of human anatomy must always involve the study of this anatomy and the living. As I've indicated previously, you should be palpating these various superficial subcutaneous structures and muscles on yourself or on your partner. Here we can well see the clavicle extending from the near the midline, laterally towards the shoulder point, to join the acromion process of the scapula from behind. Palpating the clavicle medially, the finger will drop into the jugular notch top of the manubrium directly at the midline. Extending downward is the body of the sternum to the xiphoid and then easily out the lower rib margins around to the side. Pectoralis major in this individual who is completely relaxed at this time shows up quite well. Pectoralis major having an attachment from the clavicle from the side of the sternum and from the adjacent ribs in this area, passing upward towards the humerus. Now when this muscle is tensed, you can see the contraction of the fibers better. Notice the clavicular in this area standing out much heavily. Again, the entire muscle is contracting, and it's forming the wall of the axilla that is the armpit. Relax. As he takes a, a deep breath and holds it, you can easily see the costal margins and the individual lower ribs that can be easily counted. Now, as we move down into the abdominal area, you could well see some of this basic anatomy. Again, using the upper rib margins, the costal margin for the upper portion of the abdomen, we have the protruding anterior superior spine of the ilium on both sides, which uh, is the attachment point for the inguinal ligament that we will be studying. When the anterior abdominal muscles are contracted, you can see well the linear elbow, the right line, passing through the umbilicus, and the very broad rectus abdominis muscles with its lateral margin, the semilinear line. And it's the transverse lines running across rectus abdominis. These are the transverse intersections uh, that divide the muscle into segments. Again now, on deep inspiration, as it breathes deeply, you could see the muscles flattening, but again, you can see the transverse intersections well. As we move back to the shoulder area, we have basically now just palpated some of the uh, clavicular structures, the sternal and rib uh, areas, and pectoralis major. As the matter now will turn slightly to the side, I am going to put my resistance against his arm so that he's going to try and elevate the arm to demonstrate how the attachments and how the uh, deltoid muscle stands out. Notice deltoid muscle, the groove here, which is the indicator of the area of its attachment, its most forward attachment, abutting against the pectoralis major. As we turn more to the rear, we can do the same thing again, and as he elevates his arm, you can see the heavy fibers capping the shoulder, and now, as we move to the back, the same thing will be done, and the posterior attachment can be seen. As the model now turns completely away from the camera, we can see the outline of the shoulders and of the chest area, and notice the V-shape that is given to the chest by the latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi is a muscle, remember, that arises down here at the thoracal lumbar fascia and passes upward and swings around to attach to the front area of the humerus. This muscle is a very powerful muscle in pulling rearward. In other words, extension of the arm. And as now the model tries to pull this arm rearward, you can see the bulge of the muscle stand out 
more clearly along this side. The scapula, as we move in a little bit closer here to look at this area, is easily seen the inferior angle, the vertebral border passing upward to here, to the superior angle, which can be palpated deep underneath trapezius muscle, and the spine of the scapula can be felt going out to the acromial end, where it will be joined around the front with the clavicle. Now, as these muscles are tightened, we could see the teres major standing out quite well, the deltoid, and this whole area of infraspinatus. As we look at both shoulders now, we see that tapering down from the back of the head, we have a specific outline to the shoulder. This is all done by trapezius muscle. And trapezius muscle can be well seen when the model now tries to raise his shoulder as I'm holding against resistance, pulling straight up. You can see this muscle tightening here and firing a border down into its lower third, which is masked by the skin. As the shoulder blades, the scapulae are brought close to the midline as it's standing erect and now spreading apart. You see how the scapula just slides over the rib area. And right down along the midline now in this position, you can palpate here the vertebrae prominence and then beneath that, all of the spines of the vertebrae. And as the model bends over forward, you can see these spines standing out and are easily palpable in the subcutaneous uh, tissue uh, up through the skin. As a model now will turn forward, we can see along the side as he takes a semi-deep breath and tightens the scapular muscles. As he turns to the camera, we can see here Laying the arm a bit, not only on this side, but well over on this side, these muscle fibers, sawtooth muscle fibers of serratus anterior. They, they will stand out more as the shoulder girdle is tightened and tighten the whole pectoral group. And notice how they bulge out now, and not only relaxes, they fade from view. The pectoralis major forming the anterior boundary of the axilla and behind the latissimus dorsi muscle, which now, as he tightens, becomes rigid, forming the posterior aspect of the armpit. As we look at the neck, although we haven't gotten to this area, there are some basic landmarks that you want to look at. Again, trapezius muscle posteriorly, the clavicle anteriorly. As the model raises his chin, you can see the bulge of the thyroid cartilage, the so-called Adam's apple, and the whole laryngeal complex in the anterior throat. And now when he turns his head to the side, you can see the bulge of the sternal cladomastoid, a muscle name because it attaches to sternum, to clavicle, and up behind the ear to the mastoid process. These are basic, these three structures, sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, and clavicle, are very important landmarks for our dissection in the lower neck and also as we get into the anterior neck region. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.